Hey, Griff, me and the boys are riding over to Whipstock tonight. You want to come along? No, oh, Smokey, no. I think I'll uh, go into Virginia City. Well, it's been more than a month since you rode to Whipstock with us. What's the matter? Yeah. All with you? See you in a minute. No, it's worse than that, Smokey. You wanted to talk to me? No, I don't, but someone else wants to talk to you. Hello, Griff. What are you doing here? that you was never coming back. Duffy, I told you not to follow me. Grant, please don't be mad at me. I just wanted to be with you. I told you I would come back when I could. Whither thou goest. Now, that's what that man said. Whither thou goest. You remember? Not too well, no. You must have been a lot drunker than I thought, Griff. Yeah. Griff, this lady tells us that you and her are married. That you ran out on her. Hey, I was gonna go back and see her. Now when? About a week, a month, a year, whenever you got ready, when? Look, Joe, she's my wife. Look, we understand that. You're the one that seems to have forgotten it. You just better watch the way you talk to my husband, mister. Griff, are you ashamed of me? You want me to go away? Ah, uh, Duffy. Come back and see us real soon. I sure will, Mr. Carr. Thank you. Missy, this for you. Thank you. Nay, Tanya, Tanya, Mongo. Nigger, no, and Toy, like a more Tim Gliding, like Hoy Korea. Wait, you're going to marry him, didn't I? Didn't I marry him? Did you marry him? Did you marry him? Did you marry him? Did you marry him? I want to thank you again, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Bye. Huh? Hey, hey. What? What? Aren't you going to help her up on the wagon? She ain't helpless. I ain't helpless. Enjoy your new home, Mrs. King. I will, Mr. Cartwright. You know, it's the nicest house I've ever been in. If Griff don't toe the line, you'll let us know, all right? Oh, I can handle him. Oh, he'll do enough work to pay you Paul the rent. He better. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Well, Mrs. Kidd, alone at last. You did a very good job, Griff. You seemed genuinely surprised to see me. Well, I was. I wasn't expecting you this soon. Do you think we convinced them? Well, I'm pretty sure Candy's convinced. Oh, a couple of guys from the bunkhouse, they were already fishing for invites to Sunday dinner. Good. 
Very good. Can you cook? Sure. You know, for a minute there, uh, back at the house, I thought Joe was going to hit you. Well, you know, so did I. I was wondering what I was going to do about it, and then you just stepped right in. I better start getting this stuff unpacked. Can I give you a hand? Oh, no, thanks. If I put everything away, then I'll know where everything is. That's something my grandmother taught me. What are you smiling at? You. You're like a mother robin building a nest. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing, in a way. Well, things look much better already. Well, we could sure use some pictures, don't you think? Maybe a, a hook rug right down here in front of the love seat. I think that clock looks much better there, don't you? That's fine. You know, if you could embroider, my mother used to have a, a sampler hanging up over the fireplace that, that read, Oh, wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Would you excuse me? I don't think there'd be time for that, Griff. How about something simple like, bless this home? I think I better get busy, huh? Griff, this is just a game. Remember? Don't be late for supper. Be back by sundown. That's him, all right. But I wasn't sure before I am now. Once a thief, always a thief. Well, you ought to know. Two of them following me. Well, what did you do? Well, I uh, stole one of Ben's cows. Mm -hmm. And I uh, drove him into a gully. Mm -hmm. and tomorrow, I'll butcher him. Mm -hmm. Then I'll take the meat into town. Mm -hmm. And I'll sell it. That's great. Don't forget the horse. Good. So do you. Griff, that's fine outside, but no one can see us in here. Well, then let's go back outside. Griff. What is this? That's where you sleep tonight. Oh, Duffy. It's going to be a cold night. I can always put another log on the fire.
down before it all gets cold. Thank you. Have some turnip greens. you guys want, but if it's money, all I got... I'm not here to steal anything, Mr. King. Well, what do you want? It's against the law to break into a man's house. Oh, you know all about the law, don't you, boy? Since you've been kind of playing both sides of it. All right. Who are you? What do you want? Well, we thought we'd better have a little talk with you, Mr. King, since you're going to be working for us. I work for me. Oh, doing what, Mr. King? Uh, mining? Farming? Ranching? Ranching, that's right, ranching. Well, when a man ranches, Mr. King, he's got to have some cattle. You don't have any cattle. Except for the, uh, that one bull that you stole from Ponderosa this afternoon. What bull? I don't know what you're talking about. Griff? Just let me be quiet, will you? The one you drove up the gully and penned up behind the brush? Now, you know what the one I'm talking about? <laughs> Personally, I got no objection to a man rustling a few cattle, as long as he does it on his own time. But when he works for me, he does what he's told, when he's told, and nothing more or less. And you are now working for me, Mr. King. Understand? What is it you want me to do? What you are told, when you are told. What's in it for me? A full and equal share, Mr. King. In what? The proceeds. Of what? Trust me, Mr. King. Trust me. You got that list? You know the high metal, Mr. King? There'll be some men uh, passing through here who are not familiar with this territory. They'll be looking for a man called Jonas. You will direct them to the high metal. Here's a list of the supplies we'll need and the money to buy it with. You'll bring those supplies to the grove of trees in the high meadow tomorrow night. There'll be somebody waiting for you. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. King, uh, Bring along a side of beef from that uh, bull that you stole. Wallet. Hook, line, and sinker. Well, that's just great for the fisherman, Duffy. 
But the worm on the end of the hook, he ain't too happy about it at all. Well, what's the matter? I want to know what's going on here. Well, that's what we're trying to find out, isn't it? Listen, I want you to tell me what you know that I don't. All right. The name of the man who was here, that's Jonas Holt. Jonas Holt? The, the Jonas Holt that rode with Stanton during the war between the states? Yes. Stanton went through North Texas like Quantrell went through Kansas. They looted, they burned, they murdered. Why didn't we grab it? Holt's not the man we want. He takes orders. We want the man who gives them. Stanton. Griff, there's going to be a small army up there. It's a day's ride from Carson City Mint. It's two days' ride from the gold fields of California. I mean, that's big. And that's too big for Holt to either lead or to plan. Yeah, but where is Stanton? Well, we don't know. That's what we have to find out. You pick up the supplies. Whatever they're up to, we're part of it now. Duffy, Duffy, they might just come back. I mean... just coming to call. I don't care why he's coming. Get rid of him. Why? Because I don't want him hanging around. Get rid of him. And how do we do that? Good afternoon, Mrs. King. Mr. Canaday? Well, what brings you here? Oh, pleasure and business. Is Griff around? Well, I imagine he's somewhere. Um, why don't you just come in and have a cup of coffee, huh? Come on. Oh! oh God. What is this? What's going on here? Get your hands off of my wife, will you? Yeah. What's Griff. just going on? Hey, I'll Griff. deal with you. Griff, this isn't what you think. I thought you? I could trust you. Griff. I guess I was wrong, hey, wasn't Griff. it? Just get your hands off me. Why don't you just Griff. go on? Come on. You're not wanted around here. Well, that takes care of pleasure. Let's get down to business. Now, there's a whole section of fence. It's been pulled down. It borders on your place. What do you know about it? I don't know nothing about any fence. Tom Barlow over Two Forks store says you bought a whole wagon load of supplies over there. You so what? So it's $47.38. That's right. Where did you get that kind of money, Griff? That's none of your business. Hey. Griff, what's the matter with you? I'm your friend, remember? You're my friend. Well, friend, why don't you do me two favors, huh? Just quit asking me questions which are none of your business and keep your hands off of my woman. Fair enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So long. I just don't understand you, Cannon. Now, yesterday you defend Griff, and today you're attacking him. I'm not attacking him. There's just some things I don't understand, that's all. Something's going on. Like what? Like that section of fence that got torn down. Like Griff's attitude. The last couple of days, I've seen four men, gun hands, 
Not cow hands. Moving toward that high country behind Griffith. Oh, now, come on, Candy. You can't tell the difference between a gun hand and a cow hand, and there's nothing up there anyway. I can tell the difference, Joe. And there's a lot of places up there to hide, to wait. For what? I don't know. Candy, you trying to tell me that Griff would steal from us? It's possible, yeah. Well, anything's possible, but just because a section of fence has been torn down doesn't make Griff a thief, does it? No. But I'm gonna have another look at that fence. <clears throat> Candy, why don't you uh, stay away from Griff for a while? Let him get settled down. Huh? Is that an order? Well, I just say it's a suggestion. I'll consider it. Look, I think we ought to tell him. You can't. It's, it's not right. It's like we don't trust him. I trust Candy with my life. I just can't tell him. Then let me tell him. I think he ought to know. Look, I promised Mr. Taylor I wouldn't tell anyone but you. And I promised him that you wouldn't tell anyone. Well, I didn't promise him anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell you what, Joseph. You do whatever you think is right. I'll tell you what, Bob. Every time you call me Joseph, I know in some way you got me cornered. Yes, Joseph. Flies off that wagon on the double. Let's go. What happened? He was a spy, government agent. Are you sure? Not altogether. Just suspicious. In this kind of work, Mr. King, can't take the time to be sure about every little thing. As soon as they get the supplies off there, put him on there and get rid of him. Hey, wait a minute. I never said I'd do anything. I said get rid of him. You hear? told me? They told me to get rid of that body. His name is, uh, is John McAdams. He's one of our men. How did they find out? They just got suspicious. I mean, that's all, just suspicious. Duffy, the game's over. You do what you were told to do. Get rid of him. Look, you got a dead man here. You were told that this could be dangerous and that someone might get hurt. Nobody said anything to me about anybody getting killed. Well, you can't get hurt much worse than that, can you?
I'm sorry, Griff. Yeah, Dr. So am I. You go to bed. There's some things about this kind of work that you just don't understand, Griff. Oh, I understand, Duffy. I do understand. You die doing this kind of work, and somebody just takes you out somewhere and they just stick you in the ground like an old watermelon seed. Griff. Yeah, I understand. It's just gonna take me a little while to get used to it. You'll never get used to it. Good night. some water? Help yourself. No. I'm looking for a man named Jonas. See that road? Follow that road till you get to three big rocks. Right up off the left of that, there's a little trail. Take that trail right through the pass, right up to the high country. I don't remember seeing you before. I guess that makes us even. I thought I knew everybody who worked for the Colonel. I don't work for the Colonel, I work for Jonas. It's the same thing. I'll believe that when I hear from Jonas. testified against him in a trial about five years ago. Well, then he'd know you, too. Well, I don't think he'd recognize me. My hair was so different. It was different color, different style. I wore rouge, a low-cut dress from Paris. Do you go get your things, Duffy? We're leaving. No. Damn it, Duffy, he'd recognize you. Griff, I'm in charge here. I mean, this is my decision. We stay. Yeah, we'll see about that. Told you never to come here, Griff. Never approach me, never talk to me. Nobody saw me come in here. But it isn't just you. You also endangered Duffy's life. Her life is already in danger. She recognized one of the men on the way up to that camp. Well, that's part of her job. But there is a chance he might recognize her, too. She testified against him. All I'm asking you to do is just... just get her out of there so nothing happens to her. Now, what does Duffy want? Well, she wants to stay there. There she stays. Now, look. When I told you the story that ex-con told me, I did that as a favor. And I appreciate it. And when you. I said I'd help you find out what was going on here and risk my own neck, I also did that as a favor. And you also knew that Duffy would be sticking her neck out, too. Yeah, but I, I didn't know her then. I, you think you know her now, then you should know that she knows how to take care of herself. You get back out there. You run into something you can't handle, put a lamp in one of the back rooms. Help will be on its way. Get out of here, Griff.
want to talk to you, mister. You shouldn't have come here, Mr. King. I want you to keep these men away from my house, you understand? Any business we got, you and I can handle. But I'm not going to have this scum hanging around my place, insulting my wife. I'm not very much interested in your personal problems, Mr. King. Well, you better be interested. Because the next man I find sneaking around my place, I shoot him. And I shoot to kill. You understand that? Boy, you watch your mouth. It sounds like some kind of woman you got there. That's right. I'd like to meet her. Quite probably, she'd enjoy meeting me, too. <laughs> Go home, Mr. King. Don't you come back, you hear? I'm gonna kill him, and you ain't gonna stop me. Someone was gonna have to anyhow. So might as well be you. Oh, oh easy. Sorry, is that still sore? Yeah. You certainly did a lot of work today. Uh, Everything wrong. Yeah, well, I got the job half done. I mean, if I could have closed his other eye, he wouldn't have been able to see you, let alone recognize you. Did you ever think you could have gotten yourself killed? I wasn't worried about me. I was worried about you. Well, do me a favor. Don't think about me. I can't do that. Well, try. I care for you, Duffy. Don't fall in love with me, Griff. Why? Because after this job, I'll just be going on to another one. To play another man's wife? Maybe. Will he fall in love with you, too? I hope not. Because after that, there will probably be another job waiting. Yeah, but why? Why do you do it, Duffy? Because I feel useful. Maybe it's because of the excitement. You, you mean you can't be happy unless somebody's trying to kill you? I didn't say danger, Griff. It's the excitement of doing something that... that I feel is important. Just try to understand, that's all. What am I going to do with you? do what every other husband does. What's that? Just take me for granted. On the road. One north and one south of here. One man in front and one man in back. Yes, sir. Now, where do you think you're going? Well, I thought I'd make a pot of coffee for the men. You got anything here fit for a gentleman to eat? You hungry? No, not for me. But we're expecting somebody. He just might be hungry. Oh, sure, we got food. Then you fix it. Also, put some clean sheets on the bed in case he wants to spend a night here. Now, wait a minute now. If you take our bed, where are we going to sleep? You sleep where you're told to sleep.
Thought you said he was going to be here at 8 o'clock. Almost 20 after. Well, you know, train hold. He's on the horse. And he'll be here when he gets here. It's probably him now. Who's he? Says his name's Candy. He's foreman of the Ponderosa. And he's carrying this. You are a very careless young man, Mr. King. I buried that thing. Well, I hope you buried Mr. Barnes a lot deeper than you buried that thing. Kill him and dump his body in the well. Now, wait a minute. I just cleaned out that well. You're not going to have any more use for that well. Jonas? Oh, no, sir. No, he just happened to be riding in while we're waiting for you. I don't know him. Uh, Griff King, sir, late at the Nevada State Prison. He's working for us. Why? Well, they were living here, and this, uh, this place is like a cork in a bottle, Colonel. We either had to bring them in or run them off. And if we'd uh, run them out or kill them, we'd just attract attention. This place was supposed to be deserted. Well, it you... was up until a few days ago. Very convenient. Also very convenient for us that he should just happen to be a graduate of the Nevada State Prison. Well, even more convenient, this gentleman just happened to be riding by on the very night I'm going to be here. Are there any other conveniences I should know about, Jonas? No, sir. But Colonel, if uh, you don't trust me to do this... Trust you? Jonas, I have trusted you with my very life. Nothing just happens. Everything happens for a reason. And that reason has something to do with me. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, maybe something just ought to happen to uh, all these people. Griev? Excuse me. Coffee? No, thank you. Yeah, the hair. The hair was different. And there was a little more paint on your face. And a lot more of you shown around the edges of a skimpy dress. But now you won't tell my husband, will you? I don't know I worked in a saloon. Well, it wasn't no saloon. It was a courtroom. And you gave the testimony that got me convicted. I don't know what you're talking about, mister. I got things to do. I spent every day of that trial just looking at you. Your hair pulled back. Your chin held high. But don't you worry now. I ain't gonna let him kill you. Not for a while, anyway. Well, now, uh, you don't even have to tell them, do you? Do you? Ah, uh, let me finish my business first. What do you mean, shoving my wife? Drop the gun. He used his two fingers. You heard him? Cody, well, I thought you'd like to meet the lady, Colonel. 
She's the United States Deputy Marshal. Marshal? Kill him, Shaw. Kill them all, including him. Dodie, get the horses. Signal, Duffy. As soon as we heard the shots, we moved. What about the men on the high meadow? Oh, we got a troop of cavalry ready to move on them come first light. Good. Colonel, let's go. Let's go. Duffy, I'm going to ask you something. Move it. Wait, 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 Griff. Griff, wait. Uh, now, now. I want you to tell me exactly what's been going on here. Nothing, Candy. Absolutely nothing. Wanted to make sure I had forgotten anything. I thought that's what you came out here for yesterday. I am just taking a last look around. Hey, I'm uh, gonna take your advice. I ain't gonna fall in love with you. All right. But don't try and talk me out of it. Once I made up my mind, that's it. You're a hard man, Griff. Yeah. <laughs> well. So long, Duffy. Take care of yourself. Be careful. You too. 